Well, good morning, my friends. Welcome back to Four Boys Little Homestead. If this is your first time here. Thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Well, guys, I'm sitting out here on the pool deck this morning having to listen to a chainsaw run next door over there. My neighbor's getting some trees cut down, so that's what y'all gonna be hearing in the background. But I've been getting a lot of questions on how I got my pool to go from this to this. seen the video of me erecting this pool and when I filled it what our water looked like. So I thought I'd do a little video telling people exactly what I did and how I got it to the point it's at today. Now when we started out all we had was the little pump. This is just a little rinky-dink pump that come with this pool. To me, they shouldn't sell a pool of this size with a little pump like this. This here is for a little kitty pool, 10 foot round, maybe 15 inches deep. Other than that, you buy one of these pools, unless you don't plan on having a vacuum or skimmer or anything, pretty much all this does is enough to circulate the water and then you go out to clean this filter every day. So to start out with, the day we got this pool full of that nasty water, we put one bag of this HTH Super Shock 4-in-1. This 3-shock kills bacteria and algae, crystal clear results in 24 hours. Fast action, fast dissolving, ideal for vinyl line pool. It says one bag treats 13 point, it says one bag treats 13,500 gallons. And this pool behind us ain't quite 7,000 gallons. I put a bag of this in there that day we got it full. Now let me remind you that the weather then was cold. That water wasn't but about 60 degrees. And I left this little rinky-dink pump running 24 hours a day, every day. Now the first thing in the morning I got up, I had to remove this filter and clean it. It'd be almost totally stopped up. At dinner time, I would remove this filter and clean it. That afternoon before I went in for that night, I removed this filter and cleaned it. The next morning when I got up, it'd be so stopped up it wouldn't wouldn't hardly pump in no water. Now two days after that, I got to noticing that this super shock here, it was still filmed on the top of the water. I said, well, that's probably cold. The water's so cold it ain't dissolving. And I didn't have no hand pool back or nothing, but I got this little brush here with an extended arm on it that I used to wash my travel trailer. Well, I stuck it down that pool on the bottom and I started brushing around. And when I did, guys, it would just be a cloud down there, a brown. And white, which was this stuff here that hadn't dissolved. It would just cloud up. So then I knew, since we didn't have a vacuum at the time, every morning when I changed that filter, I'd sweep that floor, stare that mess up. And when I started doing that at dinner time, this filter would be plumb stopped up. I'd clean it, I'd take this brush, I stare the pool up again, 
that evening when I had to clean it, it would be plumb stopped up. I'd stare it up again before I went to bed. Now on about the fourth day, and also we was getting rain, and we still are, we get two or three to five inches of rain a week here. I actually had to drain some water out of that pool the first, like four days after we filled it. But on that, I think the fourth day maybe, I put another bag of this stuff in there. Now the water was so nasty, I was not worried about testing the water or anything. That was the least of my worries of testing. My goal was to get it cleared up and then we'd go from there because I knew I had a long time before temperature got up enough for anybody to swim. So anyways, I put the second bag of this in there like the third or fourth day. And I continue. Every morning, every day at dinner, and every evening, I take this brush and I stir it up. Continue changing this filter, washing it out, because it would stop plumb up. Now somewhere along about the sixth day, I don't know the exact track of days now, I told my wife to get us some liquid. I said, this stuff ain't, the water's so cold, this stuff ain't dissolving the way it needs to dissolve. So if she come home and she has some of his pool essentials, chlorinating liquid. It says, kill algae, bacteria, salt system compatible, fast action, calcium free. It says on the jug to add 13 ounces to about a 10,000 gallon pool. So that first morning, I didn't measure it. I just poured what I thought was 13, maybe 15 ounces in there. And when I pour it in there, I don't pour it in one spot, even, even when I put this shock in there. I reach out there as far as I can, away from the liner, and I walk around it and kind of evenly put it all the way around the pool. That'll way to spread out and dissolve quicker. Also, at the same time this was going on, these HTH Super, the three inch chlorinating tablets. It says one tablet treats 10,000 gallons. Well, guess what? We put three of these tablets, and I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's in that little floater out there that's floating around. They made to go in the floater, you just leave them floating. And y'all say, well, that's awfully a lot, putting three of them in there. Well, you gotta remember, we was getting rain every other day, two to three inches, and I was steady having to drain the pool to get the water back down. And we're still getting that. But anyway, after about, I don't know, we're getting up there around eight or nine days of me sweeping the bottom every morning, every dead dinner, every evening. Washing this filter out three times a day. I went back and I added about 13 more ounces of this stuff in there. Now if we'd have had our sand filtered in and had our hand back, I could have done all this in probably two days. Cause you could have sucked all that settlement. What was in our water was basically rust out of old pipes and dirt. And it just settled to the bottom. Well, if you had the hand back, I could have just vacuumed it out to where I was steady having to stir it up to make it go through the filter and filter itself out. But before we got our sand filter in, I done had this pool clean. I done had all that filtered out, and I'm glad. That way, when I put the sand filter in, I wouldn't have automatically just corroded my new sand in the sand filter with all that rust and dirt. So I'd already had the, all that mess cleaned out, and it wasn't very little to any settlement anymore on the bottom. All right, after I got my Sand Pro 75D hooked up, I turned it on 24 hours a day for the beginning. 
I let it run three or four days. The pool's looking clear. I said, all right, now it's time to test the pool. And we got these little test strips. It's just because of what, these here is the Clorox pool, 30 multiple use smart strips. Six way test. It tests for free chlorine, total chlorine, pH, total alkalinity, total hardness, and stabilizer. Now I'm gonna go on to tell y'all, these pool testing strips, it's kinda like buying a ticket to a concert. What I mean by that, some people is gonna say these things ain't worth the crap. You need to have your water tested. Well, that's why I'm gonna explain this this way. When you buy these, you think of these as buying a ticket to a concert. When you go to a concert and you buy a ticket, you got whatever thousands of people in the concert. But then you got them people that says, I'm not going to a concert unless I can get a backstage pass. Well, that would be them people that says you need your pool tested to take your water and get it tested. So if you're one of them people that you won't go to a concert without going to the backstage, having a backstage pass, then you probably need to just pay and get your water tested. You ain't gonna be satisfied with these. I hope y'all understand where I'm going with that. But for the average person that's happy being in the audience watching a good concert, these are good to go by. They get you in the ballpark of everything, and in the ballpark's good enough. But anyway, I tested my water. And these little things here, until you get used to them, you kind of got to the shades. It's kind of like if you go to a paint store and you got all them little papers there with the colors of paint on them. And you pick out the one you like. But when you buy that paint and you paint it on the board, it's never exactly the same as on that paper. And it's not going to be. Never will be. Ain't going to be. So you got to kind of learn when you're looking at paint on that paper, okay, that paint ain't gonna look like this, but is that that's what I'm wanting is kind of that shade right there. So when I tested my pool, right off the bat, the total hardness was way high. Well, right off the bat, I'm not worried about total hardness and let me explain why our water here in our water system where I live is hard water you either have hard water you have soft water and very few people have perfect water coming from a water system water department so all of my life you've taken baths in your water and it's hard water or you live and you got soft water. Now soft water, guys, if you don't know what I mean, if you live somewhere and you got hard water and you go on a vacation and you get in that motel and you shampoo your hair up and it's like the water just won't wash the shampoo out of your hair, that's soft water. <clears throat> so I ain't worried about our water being hard because our water's been hard all my life here and it's always gonna be hard and we all take baths in it. So swimming in and in a little swimming pool ain't gonna hurt nothing. Well, when I tested my total chlorine, believe it or not, it was still low after putting the total and the free chlorine was low after putting all that chlorinating liquid, the shock, and three tablets floating around, it was still low. But the reason it was is because we got so much rain. I mean, I'd have, like I said, I'd have to drain my pool. I'd have to drain down two inches out of it 
every week. And we're still getting that kind of rain. So I give it about 13 more ounces of this here chlorine. And I waited a few days to test it again. But before I move on to the next test, and let me finish this first test, the pH. The pH and the total alkalinity was high. So me, not being no pool guy, ain't never really wanted no pool, but I do my research. But when I do research, guys, even on YouTube, I don't just go and listen to one person. I watch several videos, and then I use my common sense, and I go, okay, now is this guy a businessman, and he's trying to sell these chemicals? Or is this guy a pool guy that's been doing pools? It's just a normal guy and he telling me what works. I'm not out there to have my water tested for every little thing and trying to get it perfect. I ain't gonna do it. It's a waste of money for an outside little pool. But anyway, the pH was high and the total alkalinity high, was high. So to bring your pH down and your alkalinity down, and I ain't got the jug because I used the whole gallon, you can go buy you a jug of muriatic acid. Now they sell that in the pool supplies, or you can do like me and just go to the hardware store and get a gallon jug of liquid muriatic acid out of the hardware store. It's the same exact stuff. But when you use it for a pool like this, 7,000 to 10,000 gallons, don't, don't go crazy. And be careful with that muriatic acid. Don't get it on you, don't splash it on you, and when you put it in your pool, best thing to do is you use, start out putting like 13 ounces at a time in there, and pour it in your cup. Don't try to hold a jug, you'll be done sloshed it on you. You don't wanna get it on your liner. Pour it in your cup and walk around as far as you can reach out there and put it around in your pool. I waited 24 hours with my pump running 24 hours a day. Acid was still, I mean, my pH and alkalinity was still high. Now, you want your pH and alkalinity down because your pH, that, that has to do with growing your algae and stuff, but your alkalinity, if it's high, that's bad on your pumps and stuff because it builds up like white composite stuff into your, into your pump mess so you want to get your alkalinity down so i done that like three days every morning i test it and i kept pouring like 13 ounces at a time in there and i ended up using that whole gallon in this pool but it got my alkalinity and my ph to normal now the last thing on these strips is stabilizer I really ain't worried about stabilizing the pool myself until it gets to the end of the season and you're gonna close it. If you're gonna leave some water in there, before you close it, you wanna try to get your stabilizer in ideal position since it's gonna be over in winter and that'll help keep the algae down because you, you ain't gonna be steady watching it and adding stuff. So for swimming purposes, I ain't worried about total hardness and I ain't worried about Stabilizer. So guys, what it boils down to is after I got everything the way I want it, and even though we've been getting this rain for the last week, or going on two weeks, I haven't added no chlorine or no shock other than these three tablets out there in that floater. 
And even though this says one tablet for every 10,000 gallons, the way we steady getting rain, I'm still using, leaving three in there, but it's keeping everything just right. But like I said, you can see my pool's low right now because <laughs> that's a funny little story. I'm gonna go on to tell y'all so y'all can be aware of this. My wife and them decided they was gonna take a little dip yesterday. Even though the water's a little on the cool side, they was gonna get in there for a few minutes. They, they can't stand it. So the Polaris is out there floating around. Well, if you're gonna swim, I wasn't gonna unhook it and all because I knew they wasn't gonna be in there very long. So I just pulled it over to the side of the pool and I took the end that's down on the bottom and laid it over the pool. Well, now after I got my pool, everything right, I got my pump on a timer. Runs four hours off, four hours. Four hours on, four hours off. Well, they got done with their little swimming. We went in the house to eat supper. Before bedtime, I thought about it. I said, did you put that uh, Polaris back in the pool? Nope. Well, when I come out here, our pump done been running for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and it done drained our pool down almost too low. But we got a lot of rain coming this week, so I ain't going to add none of that dirty water back in it. I'm going to wait and let the rain fill it back up. But that's something to be aware of if you... If you're using a vacuum cleaner like that and you lay it over the side while you're swimming, you better put it back in because if your pump comes on, it's going to pump your water out. But one other thing I wanted to add, guys, if you test in your water and your pH or your alkalinity is low, you can use your pure baking soda. Now, this is a 12-pound bag, and I got it out of the the pool department and the reason i bought a big bag i actually guys when i bought this i wasn't even thinking about this pool i use this in my garden you have to watch some of my garden videos if you want to know what i use baking soda for but anyway it's pure baking soda even if you buy it in the little boxes like you buy at the grocery store to bring your ph up and your alkalinity up Add you about a pound to a pound and a half at a time. And let it dissolve and circulate for a couple days and then test it. Do it a little at a time, though. Don't pour too much in there. And that'll bring your pH and your alkalinity up if it's too low. You want to try to keep your pH and your alkalinity and your chlorine and your free chlorine. That's the, that's the main things you want to try to keep right hardness and your softness and your stabilizer unless you just skyrocket high or skyrocket low that really don't mean nothing and, and if you filled your pool up with your water that you're using in your house it, the hardness and softness don't matter because it's the same water you've been taking baths in all your life or the whole time you've lived where you're living but anyway had a lot of questions on how I got this pool cleared up, what chemicals I use. Guys, it ain't nothing special about these chemicals. I didn't choose these chemicals. I didn't choose this pool. I didn't choose none of this stuff. It's just what my wife brought home and it's what I started working with. Now I did do the research and got the muriatic acid. And I know to use the baking soda. That's common sense with the baking soda. I use it for different things. I used to do taxidermy. So I, the baking soda, it has its, its role in doing taxidermy work. But anyway, guys, I hope this little video helps someone out. Some of you ain't gonna agree. There's gonna be some people see this video and ain't gonna agree with me about the importance of the hardness and the st stabilizer but everybody's for their own free will you got to just choose what you want to do and what satisfies you but anyway if you like this little video give me a big thumbs up 
hit that subscribe and the best thing you can do is help me grow this channel to share my videos Appreciate you watching. God bless, and y'all have a great day. And I'll see y'all next time.